Welcome to the Raised with Jesus podcast, where the life of Jesus meets yours for 10 minutes every day. You've got your daily Bible reading for December 13th, looking at the closing portion of Luke chapter 2. We're picking up in the closing portion of Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 21. After eight days passed, when the child was circumcised, he was named Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male will be called holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what was said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, waiting for the comfort comfort of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary according to the law, Simeon took him into his arms and praised God. He said, Lord, now you dismiss your servant in peace according to your word, because my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Joseph and the child's mother were amazed at the things that were spoken about him. Then Simeon blessed him and said to Mary his mother, Listen carefully. This child is appointed for the falling and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul, too. Anna, a prophetess, was there. She was a daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, and then she was a widow of eighty-four years. She did not leave the temple complex, since she was worshipping with fasting and prayers night and day. Standing nearby at that very hour, she gave thanks to the Lord, She kept speaking about the child to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had accomplished everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town, Nazareth. The child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and God's favor was on him. Every year his parents traveled to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When he was twelve years old, they went up according to the custom of the festival. When the days had ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Since they thought he was in their group, they went a day's journey. Then they began to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem, searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions and all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? See, your father and I have been anxiously looking for you. He said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be taking care of my father's business? They did not understand what he was telling them. He went down with them and came to Nazareth. He was always obedient to them and his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. Jesus grew in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and with people. This is the word of our God. Tomorrow, of course, we'll get to Luke chapter 4. I had simply forgotten we didn't do the second half of Luke chapter 2. And it's fascinating because here in the second half of Luke 2, we've got a peek into the life of Jesus as a child. Um, Verse 21 takes place about a week after his birth is the circumcision of Jesus and the naming of Jesus. And it is kind of interesting that um, historically the naming of a child took place at the circumcision. You know, that's what we had with uh, the birth of John the Baptist roughly six months previously. And um, and also in the, the Christian church, I, probably by extension from the Old Testament custom of circumcision, uh, Old Testament ceremony, that is, um, baptism was often the time when a child was named. That's when they were given their Christ- Christian name, or often called a christening. Um, 
just kind of an interesting connection perhaps. So verse 21 is one week after Jesus is born. Verse 22 and following, when they come for the presentation at the temple, uh, the purification, and that that happens about two months after Jesus is born, after Mary's uh, body has somewhat adjusted or you know recovered and stopped bleeding from from giving birth, and they come for the purification, um, to to offer the sacrifices that are that are commanded for the purification of Mary after the cessation of her bleeding, as well as the sacrifices that are necessary to um, buy back, so to speak, the firstborn from the Lord because Luke makes the note, every firstborn male will be called holy to the Lord. And so they come to present him to the Lord and offer a sacrifice kind of in his place is the, the imagery. Um, maybe we'll talk about that a little bit if we, if we look at the book of Leviticus. Um, and so here in Jerusalem, there's this man, Simeon. We don't know how old he is. Uh, he's often pictures, pictured as an old man, um, and he's probably at least middle-aged, but there's nothing here indicating his age. Um, he just had been told by God that he would die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So whether that was, you know, somebody in his 60s, 70s, 80s, who figures that um, that he could... He could leave this earth at any time, or whether it was somebody in his, you know, mid late twenties or even early thirties, and God said, "Well, it's going to happen during your lifetime," and uh, Simeon doesn't know exactly when that is going to fall, you know, whether the next day or fifty years in the future, but he just has God's promise that it's going to happen that way, and so he he spends a lot of time at the temple. He goes to the temple. Um, we see here in verse 27, he is moved by the Spirit that day to go to the temple courts. Um, how God does that and how God did that with these particular people, you know, we don't, we don't know. Maybe <laughs> we don't know. And uh, there's, there's a little bit of speculation one might make, but the bottom line is that, that God told Simeon that he wouldn't die, and then God told Simeon today, you should go to the temple. And uh, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't presume that God is speaking the same way to us, apart from the Word of God. I've, I've encountered quite a few people, actually, almost, almost double digits, I would say, who think that, that God speaks to them uh, very often. And um, one lady back in Ottawa would talk about the, the still small voice of God speaking to her within her heart. And then she proceeded to, you know, spew forth or, or share, rather, that's a nice way of putting it, to, to share her opinions about particular doctrines and about or particular practices. And it was obvious from her sharing that she was, you know, getting these prompts from this voice that she wanted to listen to. But from what she was saying and what she was sharing, it was obvious that it wasn't in line with the Word of God and it wasn't the voice of God that she was listening to. I think she, overall, you know, sometimes there are medical conditions where a person hear, hears a voice. This lady was, didn't seem to be mentally disturbed or, or handicapped or under some sort of a um, health condition of any sort. It just is, it seemed that she listened too much to the voice of her own intuition and to the voice of her thoughts, kind of that inner monologue. That's not God's voice. That's your voice. And yeah, that voice is even tainted by the sinful flesh because we can never be free of it this side of heaven. The voice of God for you and me, um, you know, neither of us is is a prophet in the way that some of the some of the prophets were where the word of the Lord came to Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Elijah. Um, but we are people who have God's word before us. That's how you know what God has said. And that's where you see exactly what God has said. So anyway, Simeon. <laughs> Lord, now you dismiss your servant in peace according to your word, because my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles. We most often sing that after Holy Communion, and with good reason. Because Simeon, the song of Simeon here, is sung as he is holding baby Jesus in his arms, and he sees 
um, he sees or kind of looks ahead, perhaps with God's help, to what this child would accomplish, the salvation and the light for the Gentiles. And we who had previously gathered at the Lord's table, in a sense, held the Lord in our hands because he is there bodily and with his blood together with, in with and under the bread and the wine. And we say the same thing. My eyes have seen your salvation, where even if we, we don't see all the, the details, even if we don't see how the presence of Jesus happens, we have confidence that God has said, exactly as Simeon, and we have confidence that God would act and carry out the forgiveness that he promised, exactly as Simeon talked about here. Um, and then we have Anna, this prophetess. Um, verse 37, she was a widow of 84 years. That's actually the best translation I've come across for, for that verse, because that's exactly how, how the Greek text puts it. She was a widow of 84 years. Now, does that mean she was an 84-year-old woman who was a widow? Or that she um, had been a widow for 84 years? That she had been married and then she was, for 84 years after that, she was a widow. Um, personally, I lean a little bit toward the second, you know, because Luke makes the comment that she was very old in verse 36. Well, 84, okay, especially in those days, perhaps that counts as very old, but he wouldn't, he'd just be repeating himself then. But if she had been married at, let's say, you know, early teens, because that was their practice, and I think that's a very, you know, overall a good practice um, with the with the counsel of the elders or adults in one's life. Um, but anyway, married in her, married as a teenager, and then um, perhaps her husband had died when she was 20. Let's say that. And then widow for 84 years after that, she's 104 years old by that point. And, um, and that, to me, at least falls under the category of being very old, a little bit better. And then finally, the, the boy Jesus. Um, verse 40, the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and God's favor was on him. Jesus Christ going through every stage of human development. Could you imagine? I mean, we, it's, it's one thing to imagine our Savior as the little baby swaddled in a manger and the angels are singing and the shepherds are coming. It's another thing to imagine Jesus as, um, as a growing boy, learning to walk, learning to crawl, um, as, a, as a teenager or a preteen uh, with, with a voice that cracks because his voice is changing, um, having to sit down and do his memory work. You see, Jesus went through every stage of development, just like you and I. Absolutely normal, totally, completely human, just like you and I. And he cares. The book of Hebrews makes this point, that Jesus is sympathetic, and sympathetic from experience, because he's been through temptation as well, at every stage of development. Whatever you happen to, to have gone through today, Jesus has been there. Whatever pain that you've experienced in your life, Jesus has felt it. So as you go about your day today, just give that a little bit of extra thought. Think about whatever, you know, capture whatever thought happens to be floating around your mind and happens to be maybe distracting you um, or worrying you or just kind of sitting there and you don't know what to do. Capture that and think for a second, you know what? Jesus cares because he's been through this too. And he's done, he's done everything about it. He has washed away your sin. And so you can tell him about whatever it is you're feeling or experiencing today or tomorrow or yesterday. You can tell him and he promises to act on your behalf to alleviate pain and suffering. You can find us 2250 South Holland Savinia Road in Maumee or follow us on Instagram at Raised with Jesus. God bless your day.